Greetings Exiles, Bullshifter here, back with another PS4 Path of Exile video. So I've been getting quite a few questions on YouTube about crafting in general. So I'd kind of like to do just a general basic crafting guide. Now, just to kind of preface this, I'm not going to really be covering any sort of meta crafting. I won't be covering any of the fractured synthesis items just because we had already done a video on that. I also won't be covering any beast crafting because I want to include that with the menagerie video. And we also won't be covering any sort of fossil crafting because I'd like to link that in with the delve video that I plan on doing. So this is essentially just going to be a walkthrough on just some of the basic ways to start crafting your items as you may be progressing through the game and just realizing that the things that you're looting aren't quite what you're wanting for your character. Maybe you're struggling, you need a better item, and this is going to kind of help you along the way. Now, the concepts you're going to learn in this video are potentially going to help you later on when you do get to that point where you're endgame crafting your final gear. Well, I shouldn't say final gear, you're probably never going to reach your final gear, which is that carrot to chase in this game, is there's always something better around the corner. But this should at least give you a good basis for what you should be starting to do when you're thinking about crafting. So, to start this out, there's one thing you need to do in your options that's going to make crafting a lot easier. If you hit start and go to your options, turn show full descriptions on. Now there's a reason for this. So I'm going to turn it off for now and we'll just look at an item. Let's go ahead and look at this helmet here. If I hit the left stick in, it'll give me some details. It actually looks like it's doing the same thing that it did the other day when I turned my loot filter off. It's actually still showing the full descriptions, which is fine. Um, basically where you're seeing the different modifier names and which tier they are, that isn't there by default. So if you turn on those full descriptions, you'll actually see those. Now, something to keep in mind, you're likely going to be crafting rare gear or, you know, this yellow slash gold gear. You can have up to six modifiers on that, not including an implicit. So you can have three prefix and three suffix. Now, one of the things that makes this super useful is it can be kind of hard to distinguish the two, especially when you're first starting to craft items and look at modifiers. So this full description is actually going to tell you flat out what is a prefix and what is a suffix. The reason that's important is because of the fact that you are limited to three of each. You can't have four prefixes and two suffixes. You can have three of each when it comes to gold gear. With the exception of your actual jewelry, which can only have two of each. So just something to keep in mind there. So that's going to come in handy when you're crafting gear and then you decide to master craft. What's called master crafting is when you're adding a different modifier on your crafting bench. Some are prefixes there, some are suffixes there. So you'll be able to know ahead of time what you can and can't add to that. Now another rule when you're going to your crafting bench and master crafting is that you can't add something that you already have and you'll get to see that here towards the end when we go to our crafting bench and we'll hopefully get a good example of something that you can't add to your item. So crafting is a very loose term in this game to be honest. There are numerous ways to craft items but you always need to start with a base and what I mean by that is you need to start with a basic item. So right here we have a chest piece a helmet, and some slippers, you know, some boots. Crafting in a lot of other games will work by taking two things and creating something totally different. In Path of Exile, you're actually just starting with an item and then enhancing that item. So that's what I mean when I say you need a base, is you need that base item in order to be able to add things to it in order to craft a better item. So we're gonna go ahead to our stash here. And we'll go into my currency stash. And the currency that we've discussed in past videos, and we've talked about its usefulness later on in the game or as you're progressing through the game, it's primarily one as a currency, 
And two, which is probably more important, is this crafting material. So you probably got some of your currency by actually going through vendor recipes. And now you're going to go ahead and implement what you got from those vendor recipes to use in crafting. Now, some things you should also know about items is that obviously they start off gray. They can have an implicit modifier. None of these items do. When they go to blue, they can have up to two modifiers on them. So they can have a prefix and a suffix. And then once you get up to gold is when you can have the six. So one way we can go about modifying our items is by either upgrading it to a blue or we can upgrade it to a gold. Now, there's benefits to each one. One is cheaper than the other because the one currency is a lot more common than the other. But the more expensive route actually gives us a lot more control over what modifiers we have on our items, which I'll explain. Now, first things first, if you're starting with gray items, like I am here, just normal, regular items, you're probably gonna notice there's one stat that is kind of similar with all three of these items, and that's Energy Shield. Now the reason why I've chosen Energy Shield is because I'm running a Templar, and Energy Shield is a large part of my build. My Ascendancy is Inquisitor, and I do have the Ascendancy skill that when I'm standing still, I create kind of an aura around me, and I'm generating 200 Energy Shield per second. I'm also about to pick up a node in my skill tree that gives me energy shield, you know, regen as I hit with spells. So energy shield is a big deal for my character. It supplements my health, it adds more defense, it makes me tankier, which is very important in this game. So that is my reasoning behind having energy shield gear. <clears throat> now, when you're crafting gear that has energy shield, it's important to do what I've done here, and that's improve your quality, because your quality will directly increase your base energy shield of your item. Now, another thing that quality can increase on weaponry is physical damage. So just a couple things to keep in mind there. And if you actually increase the quality of your items while they're still white, it's cheaper. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So. Let's go ahead and we're increasing armor. So we're gonna need armor, scrap. If you hit square, um, if you have a currency tab, this is how this is gonna work because it actually stacks higher than what your inventory stacks can go. So if you go take item, it's gonna give you the maximum stack, which is 40 for this item. Now I can go ahead and hit X to use this. And just for the sake of giving you an example, let's go ahead and See, we're not going to be crafting gloves, so let's apply this to my gloves. It gives me a quality of 1. 1%. Now, let's use that same item. Oops, we just hit stash. My bad. Take those back. Now, this helmet doesn't have any quality, and my gloves that I just put that on didn't have any quality. Let's see what happens when I put it on this helmet when it's a gray item. 5%. That's a huge deal. I literally just saved myself four of these. Now, as you can see, I have an abundance of them, but still, you're better off saving your currency and just using them all together. Now, another thing I wanted to point out is when you're using the same currency over and over again, if you hit X and then hit square where it says repeat apply, it means exactly what it says. You can just continue to apply it until you hit the max, which is 20 base quality. Now you'll notice it's still making the noise, but the number isn't going down at all. So we're fine there. <clears throat> so now I have all these at a base 20, and it's increased my energy shield for all of these. It's actually increased my invasion, evasion rating on that helmet as well. Now, <clears throat> admittedly, I also did not get lucky with these sockets being the exact colors that I wanted them to be. I did go over here and use Jeweler's Orbs to reforge the number of sockets that were on there, which can increase or decrease the amount of sockets that are on there. Obviously, you're always looking to increase. I did use some Orbs of Fusing so that I could reforge links between sockets that weren't connected. 
and of course I used some chromatic orbs to make sure that I had the socket colors that I needed. I personally like to just get this out of the way right away. Um, you can definitely do it after you've done this crafting. It's not going to make any sort of difference in how much it costs. However, if you do improve the quality of your items, it's going to increase the likelihood of reforging links when you use an orb of fusing. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind. It can actually save you some of your orbs of fusing by increasing the quality of your items before you use it. Now, <clears throat> let's get into one of the first ways that we can improve an item. Now, <clears throat> you can possibly use an orb of transmutation to turn a normal item into a magic item, which is then going to just give it a couple of modifiers. So we'll go ahead and we'll use this and let's just use it on the helmet, why not? So I have a plus 42 intelligence, 37 increased evasion and energy shield, and 14 increased on block recovery. Now I know what you're thinking, why do you have three modifiers? You said we were only getting it two. If I hold left stick down, as you can see, it's actually counting the evasion energy shield increased on M block. Well, the evasion and energy shield actually, I'm a little inaccurate with this. The evasion and energy shield don't count because they're actually adding to the base stat of this item. So that's actually a pretty decent roll. Um, increased on block recovery. We don't really care too much about that, to be honest. Um, but it is nice that we did get a tier two evasion and energy shield. Now, the lower the tier, the better. So a tier two is a really good roll. Um, a tier one would be pretty much closest to the best roll that we could get. Um, and then we also have a suffix modifier of intelligence, which is a tier four. Honestly, really not that bad, considering we're running a character that relies heavily on intelligence because intelligence is also going to give us a bonus to our energy shield. So in all reality, it's, not that bad of a roll. It could have been a lot worse. So since we actually don't mind what we got there, I'm just going to kind of stick with that just because I'm not trying to make a perfect item in this video. I'm just kind of trying to show you guys the basics on what you can do with these items. So if I didn't like these rolls, let's just do this. You can also use orbs of chances. Um, and this can turn it into either a magic item, which is blue, or a rare item, which is yellow. Or, I mean, if you're super lucky, you could get a unique item out of it. So let's just use one of these for the sake of argument on um, these slippers. So it also turned into a blue. Now, tier four fire resistance. Let's just say I'm not too interested in that. So what we can do is we can use an orb of alteration and get new random modifiers to that. So we got an increase to energy shield and some life regen. Not bad, tier three and a tier four. So pretty me mediocre, but it is useful to our build. So I can't really complain about that one. Now, what we can do here with a blue item, because obviously we don't want to run a blue item. We want more modifiers than that. One prefix and one suffix, that's just not gonna cut it. So what we can do from here is use a regal orb. A regal orb is going to turn this from a blue item to a yellow item, or a magic to a rare. So let's go ahead and use that on this helmet, just because this helmet's actually looking like it might be somewhat usable, and apply. So now it's given us a third modifier. And I'm impressed it actually gave us more evasion and energy shield. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. A um, couple of really solid prefixes. Um, that's really solid for our build. That's gonna help us defensively quite a bit. So at this point, it's a gold item. Now, something else we could do if say we absolutely hated the modifiers that we had on our item is we could use a chaos orb and we could completely reforge all of our rare modifiers. Now, I'm not gonna do that to this item just because I'm actually pretty happy with the modifiers that we've gotten. So we'll just keep that one the way that it is. One thing we can do, however,
Well, since we only have, uh, well, no, we'll do it this way. Now say you pretty much have messed up the entire item. Um, you're not happy with the way that it ended up and you just kind of want to start over. You can use an orb of scouring, which we'll use on these shoes, and it will revert it back to its original form essentially. So you can start your crafting all over. Now, to be honest, when it comes down to it in the beginning of the game, as you can see even now as I'm in chapter nine, regal orbs aren't very common until you progress a little later in the game and they start dropping more often. Um, and the vendor recipe for them, you are probably gonna have a hard time finishing if you recall what that was from my vendor recipe video earlier. Um, I believe it's level 75 items, it's level 60 to 75, and you need a full set or you need multiple items with quality and the same exact name. Not easy to obtain, so you're kind of either trying to purchase these or waiting for them to drop. So you're not gonna have a lot early on. So the second route may be better for you in that regard, in which you can just use an Orb of Alchemy and go straight from a normal to a rare item. So right now we've just got a normal pair of slippers. Go ahead and apply that. And as you can see, we now have gold slippers. Not really all that great of rolls, but it kind of gets the point across. Now, there is one other way to actually turn a normal item to a rare item and guarantee you a stat that you want. And they're called essences. These may look familiar. You'll notice in some levels you'll find a group of enemies that are kind of just frozen in place and you'll have to spam X a few times in order to free them and fight them and they'll drop an essence. Essences are made for crafting. Now what they're gonna do is they're gonna upgrade a normal item to a rare and they're going to guarantee you one stat. And they're also gonna give you a specific range of that stat. So you'll have a pretty good idea of how good that roll is gonna be on that item for at least that one stat. Now, the rest of your stats are going to be random, so just keep that in mind. So, our chest piece is the only one we haven't run. Now, that's obviously going to fall into just armor. So with this, we'd get lightning resistance. With this, we'd get evasion. We could roll physical damage to melee attackers. Or we could roll maximum life. At this point, maximum life would probably be the most useful of those, unless we wanted to throw some lightning resistance on there. So we'll just go with the maximum life and see what kind of rolls we get. So we got the maximum life, as it said we would on the item. We got a terrible mana roll, <laughs> um, life regen, and a pretty bad intelligence roll. So something we could do here if we wanted to is we could take a Chaos Orb and we could completely reforge those with random mo new modifiers. However, I just kind of crafted this to kind of give you the idea of the fact that it was going to give us that guaranteed prefix modifier of maximum life. So those are the most common ways to make base gold items. You can either make it blue and use a regal orb and just scour if you end up not getting results that you like, or you can use an orb of chance and see if you get a blue or a gold, or if you get super lucky and get a unique. You can go straight to an orb of alchemy and take a bit of a cheaper approach just because they drop a bit more often, but your results are going to be completely randomized and you're not going to really have any control over any of those modifiers that your item gets. Or you can use an essence, which will also bring it straight to a gold item, but you'll at least have control over one of the modifiers that your item gets. Now, at this point, you'll notice that we don't have all of our modifiers. So what we can do is we can actually head over to our crafting bench and we can add a modifier. Now, I'm really digging this helmet. I'm pretty happy with the rolls that we got on it just because it's gonna give us a ton of energy shield. Now, if I replace my current helmet with it, Honestly, I'm not going to be missing much. I'm going to miss a terrible mana roll and a pretty bad life roll. So I'm going to go ahead, 
move this item over there. Now this is where you're going to see the different items that we can't craft on it because they've already been crafted. And by the way, to toggle through this, you need to use your right stick. Your left stick won't work. So it'll tell you as you hover over it that it already has a mod of this type. So we can't add that mod again. Though it is interesting, <laughs> it'll actually let us add more maximum energy shield. But odds are it's because one is probably a prefix, the other is a suffix, and here it's because there's a combination. And down here, things are a bit more expensive, but we can add some pretty solid resists to this item some different attributes in case we need them. It already has intelligence. And we can add combination resistances, which can also be very useful. Now these you're gonna unlock more of as you progress throughout the game and find more crafting recipes. So for now, I'm actually gonna leave this item alone just because this helmet is actually looking like something I'll probably actually use uh, here towards the end game. But you kind of get the idea with the crafting bench and now say this item had three prefixes already, it would also get, actually, no, it's not on there because, so I wonder if it's actually based off of the tier that it's in. Um, you'll have to excuse me because I haven't really done a whole lot of master crafting. Yeah, so I'm assuming since it's in a specific tier already of that energy mod, and we probably have the level 32 tier, it'll still let us add on the level 24 tier. But anyways, so if we had all three prefixes, it wouldn't allow us to put on any of these items. And it would tell us that we had to remove a prefix before adding another prefix. And it would only allow us to add a suffix. So also something to keep in mind, you can add sockets. You can reroll to get specific sockets. But as you can see, it's kind of pricey and you may be better off just using your chromatic orbs and taking chances as opposed to doing that. And these will show you actually all of your undiscovered diff, uh, recipes and show you exactly where you can find them. So that can be pretty useful too, in case you're trying to look for a specific one. You don't have it yet, it'll at least tell you where to go and where to find it. So that kind of covers the basis of crafting. Um, again, I didn't get super into detail. I wanted to keep things kind of vague so you could just kind of understand the basics and then either kind of piece it together from there as you get to that point or once I start streaming and we bring a character to max level, we'll start doing some more advanced crafting. So you'll kind of get to see it firsthand there as well. I just kind of want to cover everything in these tutorial videos. So that way, once I start streaming, we can put everything together and you can kind of understand why we're doing all the things that we're doing and some of the more advanced theories behind it. Now, there is one other thing I wanted to cover for a couple of reasons. Uh, I've had a few people ask about the stash. <clears throat> I have actually picked up just about every sort of stash tab you can get at this point, um, just because I find them super useful, uh, especially the currency tab. If you plan on doing a lot of crafting, the currency tab is, I can't even describe to you how useful it is, just because of the fact that you're not going to be restricted to taking a stack of 40 and putting it in your regular inventory and just trying to make do since it'll stack everything to up to a stack of 5,000. So if you plan on doing a lot of crafting, you're going to want a large amount of items um, because once you get towards the end game, you are going to want larger stacks. So that way you can just kind of continue to craft and not, you know, get stuck with an item that has a few stats that you don't want. You can continue to use your different currencies to essentially forge the exact item that you want. So I highly recommend a currency stat, a stash tab if you are looking into stash. Essence tab, this can be pretty nice. However, I don't feel it's as essential as a currency tab. And this will store a large amount of the different essences that you can find throughout the game, which obviously you'll also be using for crafting. So if you do plan on doing a lot of essence crafting, it's not necessarily a bad idea. This, there's not actually a gem stash tab. This is um, 
an enhanced dash tab. So it actually allows me to hit R3 and alter the name. Uh, that public area right there, if I click R3, this will actually put all of my items in this tab up for sale on the auction. Uh, and people can actually offer me things for them and it'll actually allow me to set on the, each individual item in here what I'm hoping to trade for it. So if you do want to trade, I would recommend having at least one of those. And these are the same. These are also premium stash tabs, all of these through here. Same with that. Um, this is a fragment tag, uh, stash tab. Also relatively useful to have, um, especially if you plan on using some of these uh, sacrifice fragments to vendor crap or um, to vendor with your Val orbs, which will bring you a Val orb, which will allow you to corrupt items. We'll get more into that once we actually kind of get more into the meta of the game. A unique stash. I like having this just to hoard uniques, to be honest with you. It allows you to put one of every single unique in the game in this stash, which can also save you a lot of space, especially if you are trying to get specific uniques saved up to build other characters with. Uh, your card tab, this is really nice to save up some cards, which you can also use to craft into more specific items, which it'll actually tell you right on the cards what you have the opportunity to craft with them. Uh, map tab, this isn't really gonna be useful to you until you're actually at end game, but once you're to that point, it's gonna be super useful because you're gonna be picking up a lot of maps and running maps, and that's essentially what you're gonna be doing in the end game for content. Uh, this is just my own premium tab that I have items for sale in, and these you're probably more than familiar with as their regular stash tabs. Now, the biggest reason why I wanted to bring this up is it does tie into crafting, especially the currency and essence tabs. And also, Grinding Gears is running a sale on stash tabs. So if it's something that you have been considering, now would probably be the time to do it. The tab sales come around pretty regularly, um, but they don't typically drop in price more than this. this is, it's pretty much the same sale every time. So if you've been kind of debating on whether you want to get some tabs or not, this would be the time to do it, especially if you're looking to get a premium stash tab because you can literally upgrade it for 10 points is the equivalency to a dollar right now. So at least you could have one premium stash tab if you're looking to trade items. Uh, they're also running a special right now, I believe, to where you probably noticed I'm wearing a different helmet in this video. Uh, right now, if you purchase anything at all, they're giving you a random cosmetic box. Uh, I believe it's a fire and ice cosmetic box, which is pretty self-explanatory. You're going to get some sort of fire or ice item, and this is a fire style of helmet. You can look at my cosmetics here. Yeah, it's literally called a fire helmet. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to mention that just because it does tie in with crafting. I will be making future videos, as I mentioned, that will cover some of the beast crafting and fossil crafting, which are also extremely useful if you know how to do them. So that'll conclude this video. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for taking part in the channel. We are growing really fast. It's super awesome. Last I checked, we were at over 625 subs. Um, and I really appreciate you guys stopping by, watching the videos. I hope they're helping you guys out. I hope it's making the game more enjoyable for you. That's my overall goal, is just to make these things more approachable. We'll get into more advanced stuff as this channel progresses through. I do plan on streaming soon. My big goal is just to make sure that we hit all of these basic topics so that way I can start streaming and we can start tying everything together getting into more advanced concepts, I can kind of show you how I like to progress through the game, and we can just kind of chat about the game in general. Uh, I'll answer as many questions as I possibly can. Uh, something I've also tried to do within the chat function of YouTube when you guys leave messages, I do try my best to answer you guys as quickly as I can. Um, just because I appreciate you guys leaving comments and being a part of the channel, it's absolutely awesome. It's something that I've always wanted to do, so you know, I'm glad you guys are there and participating and watching. I hope you continue to enjoy the videos, but as always, until next time, 
May the RNG be with you, always.